Good evening, everyone. I, I am Jonathan Weatherington. I'm the principal here at Paul Duke STEM High School. It's my pleasure to welcome you to one of our evening sessions, uh, taking you a little bit deeper into Paul Duke STEM High School. It's a shame we couldn't have you in the building, but we understand the need for social distancing and to keep everyone safe. And this does add a layer of convenience. So whether you're in your home or in your car or still at work, Hi. just thanks everybody for taking the time to learn a little bit more about our school as you're preparing for your eighth grader to make a decision around what school, whether it be Norcross or Paul Duke STEM is best for their four year high school experience. Just want to get a few things out of the way as we get started. Um, I'll speak for about 10 to 15 minutes, run through some of the information around the school. This is on, this presentation is almost identical to the one we gave last week. There are some added details as we had a little bit more time today to spend talking about Paul Duke STEM. And then in addition, we will then dive in with our parent panel, student panel, as we get ready to get going today. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start just by a quick presentation and then we'll go from there. So uh, Paul Duke STEM was established literally almost four years ago. We actually have our current junior class started with us three years ago and your students will be our freshmen that actually completes our school and brings it to full completion. And so this is a picture of the school, beautiful school, great facility. We have lots of space. It's around 300,000 square feet, provides us a lot of flexibility and space for when we need um, to space out like we do. So I wanna talk a little bit about why you might choose Paul Duke STEM. And, and it's for a variety of reasons. I know some of you are very interested in a STEM experience for your students. Your students are very interested in science, math, engineering, or technology. But I would honestly say that STEM is a little something different and it's something bigger than just those four content areas. Our approach to high school is pretty different. We really want to focus in on some key skills that our students walk away with. Um, this makes it a little bit different. And the things that we're most focused on are problem solving, communication, technology, and creativity. We want to give students the opportunity to really dive deep into problem solving. So we use project-based learning and problem-based learning as a, as a way of setting up that experience. We want our students to be good communicators. And so we're intentional about how we connect language arts to content areas and how we integrate across content areas so that students can communicate well. We know at the end of the day, regardless of whether your, stu your student goes on to be an engineer, a scientist, a musician, a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer, or a politician, they need to be able to solve problems. And we know problem solving is essential for the jobs and careers of tomorrow. So how is it different? Um, these are really the four ways that I would say our school is most different. We're a smaller school. Next year will be around 12 to 1300. So it's interesting to say uh, we're a small school, but we're definitely smaller than Norcross. Next year will be about a half the size and we'll stay at about that place for the foreseeable future. Um, that's really the intended size of our school. Um, we've done a great job pulling off almost 1,100 students off of Norcross when they were over 4,000 students. So it's mission accomplished as far as providing this cluster with some great options and great opportunities for their students, as well as bringing the enrollment at Norcross High School down. So for us, it's about a STEM experience and technology focused classes, a unique senior experience that allows every senior, our goal is for every senior to have a real world relevant experience while still in high school in their senior year that prepares them for the future. We have an innovative schedule and we use that innovative schedule in a variety of ways. We've used it during COVID-19 to help keep um, our students safer by reducing class transitions as well as class size. Uh, we take advantage of the fact that we have seven classes to give our students a, more electives to take. Uh, our classes meet five days a week. But on Fridays, our students participate in school in a blended fashion, um, actually asynchronously. Although a couple of years ago, that word was not as common in our vernacular as it is today with our current environment. We really push project and problem-based learning. We want our students, like I said, to solve problems and that to be the driver for their learning. They do this through and with technology. We want our students to learn about technology and use technology to learn. A great example of this is that our mechatronics students and engineering students just built a homemade CNC router 
in our makerspace. And so they're gonna use that over a couple of projects over the next year or so to be able to do some bigger and better woodworking things. So we also really bring a focus on the academic areas of fine arts, career and technical education, and service-focused extracurricular options. This is what our school is all about. So in many of our classrooms, you'll see technology, you'll see computers, you'll see students learning using computers, but they're also learning with hands-on experiences. They're learning in large environments. They're engaged in different learning experiences, ranging from guest speakers to hands-on learning. The four-year experience at STEM can really be broken into two primary pathways. And off of these two pathways are a lot of opportunities for personalization. But I would say our standard pathway is characterized by the BioLit course, which is our ninth grade language arts combined with ninth grade biology, where we teach that over two periods. Um, and that allows our students double the time, but the opportunity to tackle both courses at once. Then the intro to digital tech experience that all of our students have, where every student as a ninth grader takes basic computer science class to prepare and inform them for their future decisions. Then in the standard pathway, students move on to 10th grade language arts, which is integrated with world history. Um, these two integrated courses with language arts are something that we've gotten better at every year. And this year we think we've really gotten it right with two teachers working together to really bring those two curriculum alive for our students. Then once we've had these foundational experiences, our students then move on into 11th grade and 12th grade where every student, our goal again, every student engages in this C internship. This year we have about 170 seniors and well over 110 of them are engaged in a senior internship. Um, we're pretty impressed with that number because last year we had about 25% of our seniors and now we're looking at about 70% of our seniors involved in an internship. We fully expect that to grow to 80, 90, and then 100% well within the time that your eighth graders will be seniors. The second pathway is the advanced research pathway. This pathway is characterized by the biochem block course ninth grade year, where they take a full year of chemistry in the fall semester and a full year of biology in the spring semester. Then those students move on into the AP seminar language arts experience, where they really get a rich um, literacy driven experience and focus on research and academic um, vocabulary and academic approaches to language and development, which is a great experience preparing them for really how to be reflective around their learning, to think about how they learn, and then be able to communicate that effectively. That then parlays itself into the AP research course, their junior year, and then their C internship, their senior year. This experience, this pathway that we've fine tuned over the last three years is really optimized for student success. It gives students time to dive into the right things at the right time and opportunities to take advanced coursework. Now, if you're on the standard pathway, we encourage students on the standard pathway to take AP courses. We encourage students on the advanced research pathway to take um, non-AP elective courses to broaden their experience. Uh, and so understand there's some bleeding back and forth between these two pathways as students take different electives and explore different opportunities, but primarily students are on the standard pathway or the advanced research pathway, really hinging on their ninth grade biology chemistry experience and then their language arts and research choices in the AP seminar experience after that. So what we really pride ourselves on is providing students opportunities for success. And in doing so, um, it's really centered around a few key programs. When we think about what STEM means at Paul Duke STEM, the focus is really on three programs, the Applied Engineering and Robotics program, Communication Art and Design, which is where our students think creatively and solve problems through a very um, creative lens. So you'll see things like marketing in this program area, a lot of use of design thinking, uh, where our students use empathy, to drive the problem solving process, as well as multimedia applications, graphic design, television and film, animation and game design. These experiences um, in this creative area is, is an area of STEM that not a lot of people think about. And we find that when you look at these programs, a lot of our students fit into the communication art and design model because these students haven't given up on a traditional humanities experience. They just want the opportunity to apply that learning in a relevant way. Digital and innovative technology is where our students maybe do traditional applications of artificial intelligence, 
uh, cybersecurity, computer science, these traditional um, ideas in computer science really are essential here. Um, the T, if you look at our name, when you see it on a lot of applications, is different because we are expected to be the leading technology school in the district, giving our students more and wider options in computer science and then associated programs that follow up after that. Next year, we're actually looking to add a web, web development program so that our students can actually leave with web development certifications. And so that's something that we're really excited about. It's just one additional course after their computer science intro courses. So when you look at this broad program, what does this really mean? And this is a large document um, that we're happy to email you. You can find it on our school website that really provides a great overview of all that we offer from a STEM lens. Here you see those three programs that I talked about, engineering and robotics, communication, art and design, and digital innovative technology. Then within those, there are multiple pathways by which a student com go, um, completes the program. Students can move back and forth, but we really encourage by the time a student's a sophomore to pick one pathway and stick with it to finish it. This benefits the student in a variety of ways. They get to upper level courses and are able to earn advanced certifications. If you look at, there's a column in the middle um, that says certifications earned and credentials earned. And it's these certifications and credentials that students can earn while in these programs and pathways that really are a, a differentiating variable. A student who has Autodesk certification is a little bit more viable and proven as an engineering student than a student who doesn't. And so we really see opportunities there to really allow our students to set themselves apart. Um, the NACFI certifications are opportunities in two other engineering areas, as well as opportunities and certifications in Adobe applications, as well as Microsoft applications. When we look at cybersecurity, which is one of our strong and strong growing and signature programs, um, we offer Security Plus certification and Fortinet certification. And the Fortinet certification and the Security Plus are the types of certification where a student can leave high school and enter into a well-paying career, making as much as an entry-level teacher. Um, so I don't know whether to be excited or sad about that when I think about you know, the fact that uh, some of our high school graduates can make what a teacher makes, but it is nice to think about what possibilities exist. And so as you look at this document, um, this line over here, right before the dark line, these are immediate job opportunities. We have students that are gonna be working their way through college and they need to know, hey, what can I do? What can I gather while in high school to then allow me to work my way through college? Then the dark line represents college. We want every student to explore post-secondary education, whether it's a two-year school or a four-year school. Every student we know needs more education than we can give them in the four years here at Paul Duke STEM. So what might they explore? Here represents, um, once you cross that dark line, uh, a few more opportunities that are broken down by four-year and two-year opportunities that we want our students to think about and explore, and then subsequent career options that follow that. And so really, when you start to think about all the opportunities that are out there, my focus is ensuring students leave Paul Duke STEM and are successful. And thus far, hearing back from our students who have gone off to college, they are able to share some of the great things they've been able to do in the short time that they've been in college this semester. So elective courses, we offer a variety of three courses in engineering that is an engineering pathway. Uh, our science electives are really centered around environmental science and then biological applications, bioengineering, anatomy and physiology. These are courses that we'll be adding over the next couple of years. Uh, we offer more computer science classes than any other high school in the county. Uh, and so there's so many there, I didn't even bother to list them all. Audio, visual, audio, TV, and film. Um, we offer a variety of experiences there, and that program is really growing. Um, next year, we expect to have two teachers in the ABTF program, as uh, that just expands the opportunities and options for our students and really allows them to complete internships in those programs. Then the fine arts are something that we also excel in. Band and jazz band, orchestra, dance. Um, dance is unique to our school, and so that's a unique opportunity. I forgot to put down theater, but we are adding a full theater program as we look to next year, music technology, graphic arts, marketing, mechatronics. We have over 20 AP courses. And that's something to be said when you have a school of, of um, 1,000, 1,100 students to be offering the number of AP courses that we actually offer. Um, because of the IB program, we actually offer more AP courses than Norcross, but they offer AP courses and the IB courses. So, um, but we're particularly proud of our AP program. Um, whoops. Need to go back one slide. 
So the student experience is important. And that's been something that every school has just experienced a, a difference in in the current environment. The student experience is something that we're all working to improve. When I think about the signature programs that we have, cybersecurity is one that I mentioned earlier. Our um, Cyber Patriots uh, teams competed last Friday. We had, I think, five teams compete. Two teams were all female. We had a, um, a, a full team of native Spanish speakers who were in our ESOL program that competed. Uh, and then one of our younger teams, I think, finished 17th in the state. And so these are just some of these opportunities that our students are exploring and participating in. The Senior Experience and Exhibition is our fourth year senior opportunity where students get more time in their schedule to spend focused on their internship experiences. So students in the Senior Experience may choose to do an on-campus internship, working in the print shop, uh, one of our student-run businesses, working in the TV studio, or they may choose to leave campus and engage in experiences with businesses that are, we're partnered with. Or a new opportunity we recently created is the consultancy opportunity where students are on campus and in this year um, working from home, working to solve problems for industry partners that have partnered with us, where those students are actually digging through real life problems that have been brought to them. And then they're gonna present out some solutions um, over the next couple of months and try to actually solve the problem that the company is unable to dedicate enough time to at the present moment. The AP Capstone program is uh, an experience that we offer that is essentially intended to be close to or equivalent to the IB diploma program. So that gives our highest level students opportunities to reflect and think and dig deep into AP seminar and AP research. Um, we do have exp extensive club and team opportunities. Um, here is basically the list from our website. And today I got emails from two different student groups where they're looking to start two additional student clubs or organizations. And so there's always an opportunity to extend options um, to where we're really looking to really give our students rich experiences. Now, all of these experiences have looked different this year under the current COVID climate. Uh, and, but yet it's been interesting to see how our teachers and our students are making these opportunities come alive using digital collaboration tools like Zoom. Then uh, we couldn't do what we do without high quality partnerships. And we have extensive partnerships, probably the ones that uh, deserve the most credit are reflected here. So these are folks that have given us time, money, resources to really help us excel in our current environment. So both the city of Norcross and the city of Peachtree Corners are just amazing partners for us um, as they are for Norcross High School as well. Uh, Ernst & Young is a great partner. Um, Bosch is a great partner. Georgia Tech is a fantastic partner. We are actually Georgia Tech's um, model engineering high school. So they do a lot of work with us and actually give us um, faculty access. And, and in non-COVID conditions, we would actually have a part-time uh, in-resident STEM resident here helping our teachers. Um, the Georgia Film Academy is an exciting opportunity. The FBI, Mercer University, NASA has done some recent work with us. Um, and then local companies like Relutech uh, and a variety of other firms have really been outstanding in their support of our school. I say all of this because without their support, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Um, it's, a, so, it's so important to have great partners when you really think about the work of educating our students. And so this work couldn't be done without um, these partners. And I just wanted to thank them and just give you an idea of a little bit of who supports us on a constant basis. At this point, um, so we've been going for about 20 minutes, a great time to transition. Uh, I'd like to invite, uh, we have three, at least three uh, parents that are gonna join us and share their perspective from the parent point of view. And so we've got uh, Sanjay Park. Sanjay, I've never said your last name and I'm afraid I'm gonna not say it well. So it's Sanjay Parik. 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 So I've never said his last name. I've talked to him for a long time and never said his last name. Helen West and Diane Hughes. Um, Helen's interesting. She has two boys, a, a sophomore and a junior, right, Helen? Yes, that's right. And then Diane has a senior with us and Sanjay has a sophomore um, with us. And so this just kind of gives you um, some perspective on parents. And then I'm, you know, I'm just going to, parents, I'm going to just ask you a couple of questions. And uh, if you forget, don't worry, I can, I'll ask them again. But uh, just tell us so far, how would you how would you describe your students' experience and your parent experience with Paul Duke STEM High School? We'll start with Sanjay. Go from Sanjay to Helen to Diane. 
Um, so I, I mean, you know, in, in a nutshell, it's been fantastic. Um, we've got an older uh, son who is now a, uh, a freshman in college at Georgia Tech. He went to GSMST. Um, and it's interesting, um, the experience has been very different between um, the two of them, between Paul Duke and GSMST. Um, just the other day, my wife was mentioning just seeing some of the new things that are coming up in Paul Duke, that it's, it's unfortunate that Paul Duke did not exist when he was going through high school, because I think he, it, it would have been a tough choice for him uh, between GSMST and Paul Duke. Um, but overall, I think uh, the teachers are, are very engaged. Um, you know, for the last year now, we've had obviously quite a bit of challenges uh, in terms of, of the pandemic. Um, our daughter has been home since March. Uh, she's opted to not come back to school. So everything has been online. Um, I, you know, I don't feel like she's lost um, or missed out on anything uh, by not being at school because I think the school from the beginning has been set up for having the digital Fridays. Um, and so I think it was an easy move from going from one day, I mean, not easy, but uh, easier than other schools from going from one day um, to all day. So overall, um, you know, two thumbs up. Yeah, hi, we have uh, two boys. One is an 11th grader and one a 10th grader. Our 11th grader, both of them have had a great experience at Paul Duke. The 11th grader is really involved with audiovisual technology. Um, he's in his third year of the AVT program with Mr. Skelton. It's been fantastic. He's gotten a ton of experience uh, doing video that he never would have gotten anywhere else. Um, he's also involved in the advanced cybersecurity track. And I think at the end of this year, he will take one of those certification tests and become certified um, in the cybersecurity. So he's actually in two pathways, um, both of which have been really incredible for him. Um, our second son is a 10th grader and he is in the um, AP capstone research program. Um, he's loved it. He's also been involved in the band. He's in the um, advanced band and he absolutely loves Mr. Garvin. Um, and then he does the um, Cyber Patriot Club, the Drone Club, and Quiz Bowl. Um, and my oldest son has been involved in mock trial as well. Um, but the teachers, again, have just, it just has been fantastic. They um, really give our two sons the personal experience. And uh, we're planning to send our daughter there next year, one of our daughters. So we'll be sending a third child to Paul Duke. So we are we are all invested. It's just a fantastic school and we're so excited about it. And this is Kevin, my husband. So. <laughs> he can add too. <laughs> hey, so I'm Diane Hughes and I have, I have a senior and I have a 10th grader, but I, I'll talk about the senior. Um, he's, he's big into math. So that's kind of the track that he's kind of been on. Um, and being a senior, his, because he started in 10th grade, his path is a little different to what some of your kids will do, but he is doing AP research right now um, and the internship. And I guess this year has been more on the consultancy plan because, you know, obviously the COVID and everything else. But he's been working um, with the Georgia Department of Water Resources. Is that right? Anyway, they have a project to look at algae blooms um, in some of the lakes in Georgia, which, you know, he, he thinks that's very interesting. Um, so that's an internship. Uh, he's also doing um, dual enrollment with for math um, at Georgia Tech. And I will say he, you know, he feels like he was well prepared for that. Um, like his teachers, whatever, did a good job getting him ready to, to take on that challenge. Um, he also, also really enjoyed the orchestra. So I'll put a plug in for Miss Wood there too. I think she does a good job with the kids. Um, so yeah, that's, that's been his experience. All right, I also know Tina, I know Tina Budnitz is here. She has a junior. Tina, did you wanna speak or you just, uh, do you want a chance to share your perspective? Uh, sure, I have uh, two students. One's a freshman in college. I have a junior at Paul Duke. Um, it's been an amazing experience for my son. 
Um, he's in the AP Capstone program and participates in the drone club. And from the encouragement of uh, the drone club teachers and faculty, he went on to get a uh, Part 107 license. Um, and I think that just speaks back to what Dr. Weatherington was saying that you know there's a real push to find um, to connect classroom learning with real world skills. Um, he uh, has done a lot of uh, computer courses as well, computer science, game design. Um, he actually wants to pursue a liberal arts path in, in college and go to law school, but Paul Duke has been a phenomenal way for him, I think, to kind of create a niche for himself and uh, look at technology applications in law. Um, I can't say enough good things about the teacher. I'm sure some of the other principals in Gwinnett County um, don't like Dr. Weatherington for finding all the best <laughs> math and science teachers, um, but I am glad he stole them all because <laughs> um, we've, got, we've got a great lineup. I think the other nice thing about a small school um, is you know, my son still has relationships with teachers he had in prior years. Um, and some of the advanced math classes, he's even had um, teachers that have repeat, repeated and moved along with him. So it's made it very approachable, mm -hmm. um, but great, great experience. And uh, I guess one last thing I'll say is, you know, crises like COVID, I think you see bring the best and, and the worst out. And I'm just so proud of, you know, being at Paul Duke and seeing how they responded, you know, in the spring, um, I know my son got messages through Dr. Weatherington and through his teachers. Um, you just kind of encouraging them, finding other ways to be social with them, challenging them. What is your club going to do to step up and be helpful and, and find a way to do something new during COVID? Um, we really appreciated that. Thanks. So I'd love to, if, if you if parents out there, if you've got some questions or students that have joined us for this call, if you have some questions for the parents here, type them in the chat and then I'll pick them over and, 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 ask, and, and offer them to them. I have one quick question for all of our parents um, before as, as we're developing any questions that may be coming from, from other parents who are watching. What has been the thing that surprised you the most, not COVID related, but the thing that has surprised you the most um, coming over to Paul Duke now, in any order. Any big surprises, surprise you the most. Sanjay, I'll throw you on deck first. Um, big surprises. Um, I, I mean, the, the communication has been phenomenal. Um, I mean, I, I think that's what you should expect. I think for us, it was um, a pleasant surprise. Uh, given the difference for us between GSMST um, and Paul Duke. Um, you know, we're uh, in, in relative terms, we're um, somewhat new to public school for the kids. Both me and my wife have always gone through public school, uh, but we had both of the kids in Montessori, um, uh, our son up until eighth grade and our, our daughter up until fifth. Uh, and so we made those transitions over. And so um, the, the level of communication has been phenomenal. Um, I think the other thing that uh, is is surprising is the uh, the n amount of engagement from the parents, um, especially in the uh, PTSA, um, and then just kind of overall in the school. Uh, we saw that, um, and it sounds like I'm digging on GSMSC. I'm not. Um, I'm just kind of highlighting the differences. Um, you know, GSMSC was a great school for us for our son, but um, you know the the level of involvement uh, there, and and I don't know about the other high schools, was just not as much. Um, and so it's really nice to see uh, at Paul Duke that um, when there are calls, when there is need for help, um, that uh, parents will will step up and be involved. Diane, I see you unmuted. Did you have anything surprise you? Um, yes, actually, and I, I, I'm going to refer to, to you, Dr. Wellington, because I know my son started at Norcross High School. And actually, this, this is not in any way a dig against Mr. Bishop, but I'm 100% convinced that Mr. Bishop had no idea who Matthew was. I mean, and he, he had no reason to know who Matthew was, you know, for Matthew's one year that he spent at Norcross High School. Um, but I'm also pretty sure that within like a couple of weeks, you probably did know who Matthew was, and you've probably even spoken to him a couple of times. 
And I, you know, I'd include Mr. You know, Mr. Chase. I can include the guidance counselors like Ms. Patel. Um, you know, we had a couple of issues one time with scheduling, and I was like, "Oh, do I need to make an appointment with your guidance counselor? You know, what do you have to do here?" And he's like, "Oh no, I'll go and talk to her during lunch." It's like what? <laughs> so, which would never ever happen at North, you know, at a, at a large high school. But he talked to Ms. Patel during lunch, and it was all sorted out. And I didn't have to really get involved, which was, you know, great for me. So. That was a very nice surprise. Helen, did you have something? Yeah, I was thinking one thing is my son Andrew has been really involved with this audiovisual technology program. And I think it was last year, um, he just was so encouraged to set things up on his own. And he contacted Georgia Tech and um, Mr. Skelton set him up with video equipment and a team of kids and they went down to Georgia Tech early one morning and they did this whole documentary on Georgia Tech where they kind of toured the campus with their video and they made this whole sort of TV show about Georgia Tech and Andrew's just been really encouraged in that real world world experience with the technology and then also things like um, somehow he got involved with the Norcross High School football team being a video on the video team for the Norcross High School football team. And he's been really encouraged to, he goes to all the Norcross football games on the video team. And like this Friday night, they have a regional playoff game. And uh, Mr. Skelton, his teacher from Paul Duke, is going to go to the game Friday night and kind of hang out with Andrew and see what all he's doing with the video at this football game. And I just, I find that really surprising. Again, it gets back to that personal touch and just how Mr. Skelton has really encouraged Andrew in this uh, area that he's interested in. Thank you all for sharing that. So a few questions that have popped up in the chat. Um, They've been a lot about the pathways and the courses, so I'll kind of answer some of them and, and see if any other questions for the parents pop up. But uh, regarding students choosing their courses and choosing their pathway, students work with their counselors and their teachers to choose pathway or courses that they explore. Um, we have options for all types of students. So one of the questions I see in the chat is, you know, what type of student attends Paul Duke? And, and we have all types of students. We have students that are kind of considered um, academically, you know, just an average kid in eighth grade do kids that are some of the smartest in our eighth grade class. And we have the diversity of courses and levels to be able to serve those students at a level that challenges them and moves them toward graduation and uh, moves them toward being productive as, uh, as older students and then more productive as they graduate and move on. Um, when we look at colleges and universities our students have attended, last year we graduated right at 100 students. Um, most of those students, almost all of those students went on to some post-secondary experience. Some of them are at the Gwinnett Tech and working from home and staying home and working through the situation. Um, we had students go to Georgia Tech, uh, had a bunch of, a couple of students go to Mercer. Um, so a lot of our students attended really some top, top 75 universities. Uh, and with such a small graduating class, you don't see really the, the, the range of colleges that they're gonna attend. But it was a good list of colleges, a lot of local, but some of that was also driven by just the current environment. A lot of our students didn't choose to go out of state because just everything going on with COVID-19. Students made some responsible decisions to stay at home for the first couple of years. Um, so Sydney, I'll come back and answer that question for the end around pathways. Um, try to answer a few of these. All right, so I have a couple of, of um, one last question related to some of these questions for, for parents, because some of the parents talked about pathways, those sorts of things. So I have parents, I'd love to hear your perspective. So your students are headed, and Tina, you can even answer this one. So your students are headed toward a college option of their choice. So Matthew's a, a senior, um, Noah's a junior, um, and you know Andrew's a junior, and then we've got uh, a couple sophomores represented um, here. So do your students feel like they're getting ready for the college opportunities in their future? Um, and, and what is, and then to connect to that, because that can be a simple yes or no, what chat, what course has challenged your student the most at Paul Duke STEM? I think that'd be a good question. 
So are they getting ready for college and which one has challenged them the most? Diane, you're laughing and, and I think you're unmuted, so I'll let you go first. Uh, well, for my child, it was Spanish, but that was a whole different um, set of circumstances. Um, like I said, he's actually doing Georgia Tech math right now. Um, and I think the most challenging part is not the math, but it's the, you know, you're in college now. So like a friend of his just forgot to take a midterm. Oops. It's just, and it, it's not like high school where someone's going to chase you down and say, you know, look, you've got this NTI here or whatever it is, you better do it. It's gone. So, yep. That's, and that's part of the challenge, I think, is, is you know, you're preparing yourself academically, but you're also preparing yourself as a, you know, I don't know what the word is, as a maturity-wise, to be able to deal with that when you when you get to, to that environment. So, Helen, you can pick one of your boys. Which course has challenged one of them? You don't have to even tell us which one. Uh, AP chemistry has been a little challenging. Um, I don't think it's the teacher. I think the teacher's fantastic. I think he's finding it challenging. So, yeah, and um, I think one thing for Andrew is, my junior looking toward college, he's really interested in going to a school and getting on the, again, he loves sports. He maybe being on the football team's video, the video, um, video team at that college. And I think that his experiences, he'll have a, a great resume to kind of send him in that direction, so. Sanjay, which course has challenged your daughter the most? Um, so yeah, our, our daughter is a, is a bit of a pusher. She's uh, always looking to excel. Um, and so this last summer she did, um, a math class at one of the online ones, Georgia virtual or Gwinnett online. I, I can't keep the two of them straight, but, um, so now she's, uh, doing, I think it's AP calc. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's a bit advanced. So that that's probably the one that's causing her the most trouble I'd say. Um, but she's pretty on top of most of all of it. So um, it's, it's kind of hard to say that it's really trouble for her, but uh, it's, you know, I think that this is a, uh, a thing that's dependent on the, on the kid, on the person in terms of like where their interests lie. Obviously not everybody's going to be great at everything. You're probably going to have one subject or another that you're not going to be good at. And all of us probably were too. And so that's, you know, you just got to know that and figure it out. And, and uh, fortunately at Paul Duke, there's a lot of resources to help um, when you've got those kinds of challenges. Our daughter actually was a part of a group that somewhat spun out of, I think, uh, FBLA, the Future Business Leaders of America, um, which she's a part of at Paul Duke. And they've actually started up a homework hotline that happens, I don't know when. It's in the evenings. I don't know which days. Um, and so, uh, and it's not just for Paul Duke kids, it's for anybody that has a problem with uh, homework, you can call in um, and have other students help you with uh, whatever homework. So, um, you know, resources like that also pop up. Dana, anything you want to throw in there to close us out? Um, you know, I think BC Calc sophomore year last year was, was challenging, but um, you know, the teacher was available all the time. And so it was never stressful, although it was was challenging. There was always help there. Um, and then I will say there's been one or two classes that um, uh, like computer classes that would have been easy, but I was delighted that the teachers created a challenge and um, in several cases gave students projects outside the curriculum um, so they could do other things. In terms of preparing for college, I think the thing I like the best about Paul Duke is there's so many opportunities for students to stand out beyond just scores and grades and, and show schools how it is that they're unique and show them how they've investigated their passions and their pursuits and done something interesting with them. Well, join me in thanking these parents. I don't know if they can hang around the, the whole hour to the end when we get to some extended Q&A, but if you can, thank you so much for the answer. Samantha, thank you so much for, for your time. I want to take a second. We have two of our students with us, Candace and Abigail, um, here. And so uh, I don't know, uh, Abigail, I think uh, we want, do you mind kicking us off and going first? Tell us who you are. Um, you know, you can tell us, uh, I guess you're both, golly, you're both juniors now. Wow, time flies. And so they're both juniors. And so you can both tell us a little bit about your perspective and 
what this year was like and then kind of what Paul Duke was like pre-COVID. So Abigail, go ahead and you go first. Okay, yeah. Hi, my name is Abigail Spalia and I am in Paul Duke STEM. I'm part of the um, AP Capstone pathway and also the Mechatronics pathway. And this year I also started the Graphic Design pathway. Um, my overall experience has been great, especially with the engineering pathway, Mr. Cochran. He's a very fun teacher because like in our class, it's very diverse. You have like, um, so like, you know, so, like they don't speak English, but like they're still like helping build stuff. And like last year we built um, a 340 set actually for um, a Grinch project, which was like pretty, was pretty cool. <laughs> And then um, this year, we're also working on using the CNC machine. Um, Dr. Weddington just spoke about earlier to um, create some snowman to have a little bit of like a lake near um, Christmas festival to display at the end of it. Um, with graphic design, since I just started, um, it's been um, pretty great with Ms. Wright because um, the, um, the Adobe software can be a bit challenging sometimes, but then she's always like on top of it, like emailing ways on how to do it and sending like videos on how to do the projects and stuff like that. And it's been pretty cool along with the um, AP um, pathway. Um, this year it was a bit tough because um, school's digital and I was falling behind a bit, but like my AP teachers and my counselors, they were like really supporting me and pushing me on to like fight and to like get better at what I was missing out. And I was able to stay after school and get all the help that I needed. So it was pretty great. Go ahead, Candice. Hello, my name is Candice and I am a junior and I'm also on the AP capstone pathway and it is really challenging and it's really pushing us to think differently and I really appreciate it even though it's kind of difficult for me at the moment with this digital setting but at Paul Duke I am in DECA and I joined DECA in freshman year and I joined DECA randomly like I saw really pretty balloons at our activity fair they were huge and I was like what's DECA and I just joined and now I am a vice president. So, and I think that I'm pursuing a business career, which is really insane to think about. So when I think of Paul Duke, I just think of opportunities. I cannot stress opportunity at Paul Duke, especially being a really small school compared to Norcross. You get to connect to teachers. You have a community around you at all times like no matter what. And you can also build communities. I know that we were able to start a club at Paul Duke specifically for the Asian American population at school. And that has been a fantastic opportunity, especially because we're small and you would never think that students would be able to make these changes to the school. So basically, because we're small, the connections between the admin, the teachers, and the fact that Dr. Wellington, Mr. Chase, and Mrs. Russell know our names, that's a big deal to me. So I love Paul Duke. It's a great experience. It's challenging, but it's really fun. I've met a lot of really cool people that are very like-minded, and I've met a lot of teachers that you know that they have your back. They're so supportive and they're always available to help you even if you don't think that they are, but you can send them a quick email and they respond and they listen to you. So my experience here has been amazing. So if you have any questions and you wanna put them in the chat for the students or the parents specifically, feel free to just say for the, you know, you can say for the parents, I have this question for the students have this question. Um, so Candace and Abigail, thanks for, for sharing what you've shared. I have, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, if you could, um, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. So I'd love to hear um, for you, what was one of the big surprises coming from middle school into ninth grade at Paul Duke STEM? So what were some of the things that surprised you as you transitioned in as a freshman? Um, I would say the biggest thing that surprised me was the engineering lab 
because it's like it takes over like most of like the first floor and it has like all these like cool equipment and, and tools to use and I was not expecting that like I thought we we're going to learn like the basics of engineering a little bit of coding but I wasn't expecting to actually get all the hands-on experience and also with the extensive amount of clubs like outside of just like um academics too that also involve engineering that was shocking <laughs> For our year, we chose Paul Duke, and we this is our transition from middle school to high school, but we had to choose Paul Duke without knowing what it looked like. So we've never toured the school. We didn't have an, a lot of pictures that were fully developed. So I think what surprised me was how nice the campus was, to be honest. Like we have these really cool circle lights in the commons and that, just sticks with me because I find that so cool for no reason. It's just that surprised me. But Flex Friday also really surprised me. They told us that, you know, coming from middle school, they told us that Fridays were off and immediately we're like, wow, that's amazing. But actually experiencing the, although we had many schedule changes, experiencing Flex Friday, it was really cool because that really is a great opportunity. Like Flex Friday, all of our clubs would meet on that day if we were falling behind. Having that extra day to just push work aside to Sunday to do it or the weekend to do Friday work and just having that time with our teachers was just really nice. It really surprised me how we were able to get this chunk of time to personally talk to teachers and do other things aside from academics all the time. And then we would use our weekend to catch up on all of the Flex Friday work. I think that's great perspective. Um, what, thinking about the things that surprised you, if you had to give advice to freshmen, whether they choose Norcross or Paul Duke, what, what advice to freshmen would you have? Um, I guess, um, an advice I'd give to them would be that you don't have to know what you want to do because like Candace said Paul Duke has a lot of amazing opportunities I honestly did not realize how many opportunities there were to like the beginning of this year and sophomore year and so you don't have to like know like what you want to do exactly like you don't have to know by sophomore year I want to take the engineering pathway so I can get the certification like you don't have to know just like dabble in a little bit of everything and like get the experience so that when you do go to college then like you're certain of what you want to do. Yes, I completely agree with Abigail. Like, even with the word STEM in our title, if you end up not loving technology or engineering and all of the STEM stuff, there are pathways that are fitted to you. So yes, explore everything if you can. If you don't like something, you can make a change. I think that my advice would just be to reach out to your teachers and be open to meeting people and just communicating. I think in freshman year, I didn't really do that much and I'm still working on the communicating thing, but it's been really great reaching out to the admin for help or reaching out to the teachers for help. I really recommend doing that. So we have a question about Flex Friday and I really appreciate that question um, because Three years ago, Flex Friday seemed like a crazy idea. And, and essentially what Flex Friday is, is that students don't have to come to school to learn. And I know now that seems like, duh, because we've been doing you know, digital learning for three, three quarters now at the end of this semester. Um, but a couple of years ago, this idea of doing asynchronous learning so that students get assignments for some of their classes and then students can stay home and do those assignments or students can come in. They have the flexibility either way. Uh, and so that's the setup for Flex Friday is that students get assignments for four, well, for four content areas. So for example, I think uh, this past Flex Friday, testing my memory was a gold Flex Friday. So they had math, they had uh, Spanish or French, they had CTE classes, and then they had um, fine arts. And so those are our gold Flex Fridays. Now students may be taking multiple math classes or multiple CTE classes. So they may have multiple uh, classes to do work for, but for most students that gives a pretty pretty fair balance. Um, and especially for our freshmen gets a fair balance. 
And then what the students do is they complete those assignments. Some of our students travel, some of our students engage in extracurriculars outside of Paul Duke. Um, Candace, Abigail, what, what else would, how else would you describe Flex Friday? Um, I feel like Candace described Flex Friday perfectly earlier, just being like a time to like interact with your teachers and also being a time to like host club activities and just like, just like uh, create a community amongst uh, in Paul Duke and also like, um, if you don't have like the resources at home to do certain homeworks that you had like during the week, you can come into school and like focus on your schoolwork and do it there because I know for me, I'm like, well, just I'll come back like, won't be like for me to do my work so then over Friday like I'm very focused because I like <laughs> there's nothing else to do at school so I'm very focused I'm able to like get my work so I guess it really depends with if you choose to go to school or choose to stay at home if you do not choose to go to school Flex Friday is a time where you can sleep in and catch up on rest for the week and then do the work throughout the day or over the weekend. But if you go in person, assuming that we're looking at it through that perspective, then it's a time for extracurriculars to do test corrections, to get extra tutoring. It's a time to just get extra help and just sit in teachers' classrooms and just do your work. But if you're at home, it's a time where you have a lot of freedom. As long as you do all of your work by Sunday night, you, I definitely, I think it helped a lot with my mental health. I think that that extra day every week helps a lot with being able to take some time for yourself and not have to do work every single day of the week until the weekend. It lets you catch up on work that you may have missed throughout the week. So it's a lot to interpret and it's just opportunity, opportunity. And I think it also teaches some self-discipline. So you've heard how Candace or Abigail use Flex Friday and a lot of our students use it differently. We have students that work um, their part-time job on Fridays because they can get the lunch shift at, at Chick-fil-A or they can have other opportunities. And so how our students use Flex Friday really does vary. And at the time, it was a really innovative idea that students could go to both in-person classes and digitally take classes. And I think that uh, we are just now beginning to see the beginning of those opportunities. So a few questions in the, in the pathway. I appreciate it, Mr. Chase. We will get the, uh, that graphic that I shared that walks through the pathways online. Um, related to the biological sciences, we have a lot of students that come to our school interested in medical careers and in biological opportunities. Um, what I would recommend for those students in their STEM pathways, they might focus on AP research or AP capstone and then take bioengineering as an elective or anatomy and physiology as elective, because the most important thing, and this is gonna surprise some of you parents out there, but if your student is interested in medicine, AP chemistry is their most important course. Because when you look at students who are not successful in college and medical careers, it is chemistry. Right now I have a daughter who is a, who is a nursing major at the University of Alabama, and she gets chemistry tutoring every weekend, curi um, uh, courtesy of you know who. And so basically she's struggling in chemistry. I tried to get her to take AP chemistry as a senior. She didn't want to. And so now she has to listen to her dad say, I told you so every weekend. And so what I would say is that if you're interested in a medical career, it's not necessarily the electives that you wanna take like it might be in a technology area, because if you learn to code in Java, it doesn't matter. But learning how to do a titration and learning how to understand redox reactions it's a different kind of experience and you, and you really need to take those advanced classes to be ready for those foundational pieces. When you look at technology opportunities in college, they're not trying to weed students out, they're trying to figure out ways to keep students in. When you look at biomedical opportunities, they are looking to weed students out. So a great foundation in chemistry, a great foundation in physics are the keys to biomedical career success. So I would just throw that in there as your free college advising plug. Um, and so we do, if your student is interested in AP computer science or an advanced computer science pathway as a ninth grader, once you choose Paul Duke, you would list that as one of your electives and follow it with Mr. Chase. Um, and so that would be your, your, your next steps. Um, and then are there any school fees? We do ask that you make some donations 
to help cover some of the costs. We have courses that, uh, believe it or not, are traditional fine arts, visual arts, 2D, 3D design, um, uh, photography, some of those courses. They use a lot of resources, and so it helps us to give the more money that we have. And those fees are usually around 10 to, to $12. That 10 to $12 goes a long way once you start to add, add it up. We were able to send a lot of our students um, art at home kits, science kits this year with the help and, and sponsorship of our PTSA. And so we've been able to do a lot for our students to give them some hands-on experiences, even if they're at home. Um, is it correct that there are typically no tests on Friday? It depends. Uh, sometimes we have tests on Fridays, but the nice thing about a test on Friday is you have the whole weekend to take it typically. So it, it gives an extended period of time which is kind of nice. Candace, Abigail, do y'all often have tests on Fridays? Um, not often in person. We never had tests on Fridays. We would always have tests on Thursdays if it's at the end of the week. We also didn't really have tests on Mondays either. The teachers mm -hmm. are really happy about that. But with this digital setting, a lot of teachers, well, there are teachers that do tests on Fridays and we do have the entire weekend to take it and we can take it whenever as long as we have that chunk of time since it's timed. But other than that, yes now, no back then. Okay, well, good question. Other questions for our students, parents, or for myself? I've tried to keep up and, and answer a lot of the questions in the chat. Uh, Mr. Chase has done a great job typing in some answers as well. Thank you, sir. Um, New theater program, when is the program expected to begin? So we've offered some foundational classes over the last few years. So we actually have students who are in acting, which is a second level class right now. Um, and then we have, I forget the, what the intro course is actually called, called, but we've offered the intro course this year and last year. So next year we'll have students ready to go into the third year and really move into a higher level production. And so that is, that's happening next year. Um, we will be hiring a theater teacher. A lot of times theater teachers are also English teachers. So whether the balance of whether they're just teaching some theater and some English or all theater will really depend on what students choose. Um, that's something that's really an interesting idea, you know, a, a fun thing about school is that the staffing, uh, the teachers that we hire is driven by the registration of our students. People often ask because we'll actually start registering our current students in January in earnest. And people are like, why are you registered so far in advance? And it's because we need to hire the teachers for the classes that the students want to take. And so that drives what your students want to take, um, drives our hiring decisions. Do we offer tours of Paul Duke? Um, there are some tours. If you will go to the website, you can sign up. I think there's a tour this Friday at 9 a.m. Mr. Chase is giving me the thumbs up. He is, I think, our tour guide this Friday. And so he's, he's doing that um, this Friday. And so you can sign up to do that. Um, the, we're not able to do as many tours as we used to do because of COVID and social distancing. Um, student dress code at Paul Duke, we have the same dress code as most Gwinnett County Public Schools. Um, but I will say this, um, we're, so, and Sanjay can speak to this because I think he, he, was a, he, was a, he was a computer science kind of person. So if you ever go into a, a tech company, you'll see every employee wearing a hoodie. And they're like slouched down in their chairs, wearing the hoodies, coding away. And so we try to, to understand our student population and reflect that they don't wear football jerseys, they wear hoodies. And so uh, we're a little lax on hoodies. Um, we can't be today now because they wear masks. So to be able to identify them, they have to take the, the hoods off. But we are, that is the one place where we've given a little ground is on, is on hoods, um, just because it just seems to match the culture of our school. Um, and then I have a question here about, student choosing advanced or standard pathway. Um, and really the student and the parent make that decision. Um, we will, can talk to you about what it takes to be academically ready, but there's also, if you view those as maybe um, blue and yellow, like they're reflected on that chart, there's also a lot of green in the school, to be fair. You have a lot of students on the standard pathway taking AP classes just because they didn't wanna take the AP research um, pathway. It's kind of like being an IB student at Norcross. There are the diploma students, and then there are students that just take some IB courses. We have students just like that at Paul Duke, and that would be that shade of green in the middle. Um, and so we have a lot of students along those different pathways and opportunities. Other questions, other ideas? Anybody want to unmute and talk besides me?
So there are physical education classes. We have basic physical education and health, which are requirements for graduation, as well as some team sports and personal fitness classes, which are elective classes. And so our students have some uh, a variety of courses. Mr. Chase, you unmuted. Oh, we got uh, intro to rec games, advanced rec games, body sculpting, advanced body sculpting, weightlifting, advanced weightlifting. We have a lot of um, intramurals. Intramurals is huge on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and flex block Fridays. Um, plenty. Let's see what classes do they teach coding in? Um, so we, all of our freshmen take IDT, which is Intro to Digital Tech. We teach some basic web design, basic coding, basic robotics. Um, and then beyond that, it's AP Computer Science Principles and AP Computer Science A, which then opens the door to kind of um, some internships opportunities. When you get past AP Computer Science A, um, right now that's one of the most advanced courses. You can then flow into game design and do some coding in, in game design in Unity. And so that's kind of, that, those are the big places that we have. Any other questions? I appreciate it. You guys are using the chat really well. That's helpful as it uh, allows for questions to be answered. Parents, anything you want to share in closing? We're at 733. I want to give the parents a chance to, to share any closing words of wisdom to our eighth grade parents before you sign off. And then I'll hang on and answer questions as long as, as folks are as folks want. That way, uh, I want you to be able to get the information you need as you get ready for the decision for you and your family. So any closing words from Tina, Helen, Diane, or Sanjay? My final thought is um, looking back now that I have one in college that's finished high school and one closing in towards the end is culture really matters. Um, and Paul Duke definitely is preparing my child academically but I'm even more happy about the balance and the culture that's at Paul Duke um, and that experience for him. Thanks, Tina. Helen, Sanjay? Yeah, I mean, I'll just say for the parents, just make sure you pick the school that works well for your kid. Um, you know, we've seen other parents make choices that we're driven not ideally by be what's best for their child and, and instead of what they wanted um, for their kid. And, and those don't always match up. Um, you know, obviously I think all of us parents on this panel think Paul Duke is a great school and, and, and we believe it for our kids. Um, and we think that's probably true for your kids too, but it might not be. So if, it, if it's not, um, you know, make sure that you, you keep an eye on, on what's most important and, and whatever's you know, best for your kid. To succeed. We've seen this at GSMST that um, some kids go through there and it, it's not the best school for them. And, you know, it's not that they're not great kids. It's just not the best fit. And they would have succeeded um, outstandingly at some other school. Um, we think that, um, you know, probably most kids will succeed at Paul Duke, but it's very likely that there are kids that wouldn't. So um, just, just keep an eye on that. Great point. Diane or Helen, anything y'all want to say? Candace or Abigail, any closing words of wisdom for the, our eighth grade students? Um, I just like to say, don't let um, the STEM part of Paul Duke scare you. Don't let the AP part of it scare you. Don't like, you think like, oh, only like Bill Gates kind of students can go here. Like, no, that is not it at all. You can be on level standard kid and take like some AP classes. Do not let it scare you. Take it and fail it, but at least you tried. <laughs> I know that like a lot of the students when we were making our decision, one of the biggest thing that was making people hesitant was where their friends were going. So I know all of my friends went to Norcross and I was like, I'm just gonna go to Paul Duke. And yes, a lot of people would say stuff, but I'm really glad that I made the decision. So please don't choose a place this school based on what your friends think i think that's a really big thing again just choose what you think is best for you based on these meetings and the information you're given i think that's just my best advice don't do it for the friends even though like you can still keep in contact with them
Well, just, you know, show, show some digital love to the students and the parents for taking some time out. Um, just really appreciate them. I think their perspective was spot on. Uh, there is not a bad choice. That's the good news. And, and I can know, I know for several of our parent panelists, um, a couple of them have had students or will have students that go to Norcross or go to Paul Duke for the right reasons. And so I appreciate Sanjay sharing that as well. I think if you choose the right school for the right reason, there isn't a bad choice between Paul Duke, Sam and Norcross. And that's the great thing. And so I think the thing I'm most proud about is just to hear our students talk about our school. And, and I think they say it well, don't be scared of the STEM part. Choose the school that matches you, that gives you opportunities, the opportunities that you're interested in. Um, you're gonna be able to get the academics and your friends will change and evolve. And I think that was a, that was a good piece of wisdom from Candace. So, um, so any other questions as we close out? So those of you that were guest panelists and we're here, you're free to go. I'm gonna turn you loose and let you run. Um, and then Candice, Abigail, thank you guys. Thank you ladies. Um, Sanjay, Tina, Helen, Diane, thank you so much. Uh, any other questions from the parents? Feel free to part, type them in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself. I did think there was a few sports questions around, um, does Paul, Paul Duke have a swim team or some other uh, activities? So uh, I appreciate the question. So we don't actually have uh, high school competitive athletics the way a traditional school does. Uh, however, students at our school will often explore their athletic prowess and interest through club sports. So for example, this Thursday afternoon, we're actually having a college signing party two of our seniors are signing uh, swimming scholarships at uh, colleges in, in, Amer in, in the nation, one with Miami of Ohio and one with Washington University in St. Louis. And so those are two um, great schools. Uh, and so our students have the opportunities to go to college and be college athletes, even though they don't do that um, here at our school. So if you're a very uh, high level athlete, um, you don't have to engage in sports at the high school level. We have a couple of high level soccer players who play club, who play club soccer, and that's how they're moving forward in their careers as, as, as uh, student athletes, so to speak. Um, so we have intramural sports, which are great because those students, it, it's kind of uh, students playing against each other, um, a great way for students to stay active and stay connected as a student body. So we have students who would not have made the basketball team at Norcross, but they can play basketball here. Same thing with volleyball. So we really had these great opportunities for students to stay active, to stay engaged. You heard Mr. Chase talk about all the health PE courses we have. So that gives you just a little bit of perspective around that. Uh, other questions, because I did see some of those things pop up. Kira. Dr. Weatherington, hi, how are you? Um, my daughter is currently a Duke TIP student, right? And so uh, during summer, she has opportunities to like go to different things in like, well, before COVID, she was, I think she's gonna go to Wilberforce and study uh, forensic science or something like that. Do, are those, are those mutually exclusive or can the things she do, she does with Duke TIP be like, I guess, added towards credit here at Paul Duke? So she can't get high school credit for Duke TIP experiences, okay. but those experiences do round her out. It gives her broader exposure, helps okay. maybe inform some of the elective courses she may choose to take, mm -hmm. um, and may open the door for some summer internships and experiences as well as her senior experience. Okay. Um, and so I think that view the things that you're doing through Duke TIP as um, an opportunity to taste and experience different opportunities that then can inform uh, future decisions, because I think Candace and Abigail said it well, you don't need to come to high school knowing everything that you want to do. It's mm -hmm. still a time to, to fill things out, to try things out. And that's some of the great things about programs like Duke TIP or some of the programs that we offer. You get time to figure things out. We don't okay. expect 14 year olds to have their life planned out. In fact, I'd be really concerned if it was. <laughs> um, but, uh, but those kind of experiences just enrich and add value. Awesome, thank you so much. Great question. See, I didn't buy I have it. a question. Go ahead, Sydney. 
Um, so, well, actually, actually, I think I have like two questions. But my first question being, um, in the AP Research Pathway, one of the classes that you're supposed to take is like math. And if you took like advanced math prior to high school, like in middle school, what type of math would you be taking um, in high school, like starting with ninth grade? That's a great question, Sydney. We actually have ninth graders taking up to nine. We have nine different math courses that our ninth graders are taking. So they range from calculus to algebra one. And which one's the right one? The one that is right for the student, right? And so these, you know, I think we often view courses as a race, like I got farther than other people, but that, that has advantages. Like for example, if you wanna be a mathematician, uh, Ms. Hughes, uh, Ms. Diane, who shared with us, her son is very strong in math. So he taking a lot of math classes is the right option for him. I was a good math student, um, but I wasn't interested in majoring in math. So once I got to calculus in high school, that was really all I wanted to accomplish. So I think it depends on your interest. If you're taking accelerated algebra, your next course would be accelerated geometry. If you're right now taking accelerated geometry, your next course would be accelerated pre-cal. And so the, the next course in the sequence is the way math works. Math is a very linear curriculum, whereas science has the opportunity to fork off and explore different branches. So that's a, that's a long answer to your simple question. What was your other question, Sydney? My other question was, I heard, oh, I'm sorry, one. My other question was regarding um, some of the other like guest speaking um, students were speaking about like the different pathways they were on and like don't worry about pathways. But one of the things I think her name was Abigail, but she said how she was on the engineering pathway and I just want and it was like and you were talking about how like most of the engineering pathway students are like wearing hoodies and coding and I know one of my passions is like coding so I wanted to know like where in the I guess or one of my things is like, could you further explain the engineering pathway and also where in there would you like learn about coding and things like that? No, great question. So the engineering pathway is a three, three course pathway um, that students work through foundations, concepts and applications all in engineering where they have the opportunity to solve problems and apply their technical understanding to those sorts of things. Um, the major computer application in engineering is computer aided drafting or CAD where they use um, Autodesk and other CAD software to design and create. So, and that's great because students learn basic engineering principles. They learn about engineering careers. They, they learn a lot about engineering. For computer science, you would choose one of the computer science pathways. Um, so you would take IDT or one of the more advanced intro courses, and then you would move, work your way through a course sequence in, in computer science. And so you can actually do both of those. And so our students take seven classes. There's only four required core academics. Um, most students take a foreign language or a world language, French or Spanish. And then some students take a fine arts and then a technology class. If you're not interested in taking, um, or, or, or you get to a certain place where you're done with your world languages or you're done with your fine arts, then you can double up in the technology areas. And so a lot of our students will do that. Okay, so in your AP research pathway, I noticed that it was like um, digital technology or a, um, AP computer science. Could you like um, swap that out, I guess you could say, for like one of the engineering type things? No, your freshman year, we want you to take one of those computer science classes as a basic foundation, but you could take the engineering class as one of your electives. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. You I have, don't have to take a social studies class your freshman year, so that gives you a little bit more elective flexibility. Sorry, Sabrina, go ahead. I apologize. Um, I was tardy, <laughs> um, but I had a question. So I have an eighth grader over at Pinckneyville. They just finished the PSATs. Unfortunately, he was not able to attend, but I do need to know, is that one of the requirements uh, for the students? Okay. No, there are no requirements. For okay. they, can just, they just have to have a desire to want to come. Um, and that goes to the fact that there's a place at Paul Duke for, for a variety of students. From your highest academic student, I know that came up in the, in the, in the chat box, to students who are more on an academic normal track. Um, and we're really proud of that diversity because um, then the students, when they take some of their elective classes, they get a chance to work together. And, and it gives our chance, some of our smartest students 
a chance to participate or appreciate the technical skills that some of our other students have. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. No problem. Any other questions? These have been some great questions. I have a question. Yes. Hi, my question is, my son is in orchestra, so I've been to Paul Duke a few times for their performances, but I never got like a full tour. And I see the question at the bottom, but my children was acting up, so I didn't see, I didn't hear the answer to the question about the tour. So there are tours available on the school website. I think if you go to the school website in the front page, um, I'm trying to see myself right this second. If you go there and then if you go to the information about um, right on the top left, it's P, uh, PMS and SMS um, school selection. I think if you click in there and then scroll down, um, there is a section interested in a tour of Paul Duke STEM and I'm gonna share my screen so that you can see what I'm talking about because that would be helpful. <laughs> to you. Um, so right here, so I just came to Paul Duke STEM. So I'll go back to the to the home page. Uh, you go here, then right here in this section, this is where we have all of our, our information for our rising ninth graders. You click there, there's a variety of information and promotional material. I'm very proud of the fact that our students <laughs> created the recruitment video and our information packet. That was completely student designed this year, which has been oh, pretty awesome. And then if you go down uh, down the page a little bit, you can see there's information on how to register for a tour of Paul Duke STEM right here in this area. And then for those of you that aren't able to come to one of our in-person tours, you can actually, there's a virtual tour here where you can actually tour the school digitally this way. And so it gives an opportunity and a, a different way to experience um, the school. So that is a little bit about the, that, that site. Just that's a valuable resource I think for parents and something to check out if you have a chance. All right, I have one more question. Sure. I'm also thinking that I have, well, I have a sixth grader, but I have one that I think I want to go to Norcross and the other one I want to go to Paul Duke. Do you think it's a good idea to separate them if they're going to be together their whole, pretty much their whole school year, they've always been together. But I'm thinking about separating them. Okay, hold on. So that's such an interesting question. Um, and I, and, I, and I hated that I let some of our parent panelists go because Miss Miss West, who is actually on, we have her older sons, but I believe she actually has twin daughters. Who, uh -huh. Give me the thumbs up. We, and she has twin daughters. One is gonna go to Norcross and one is gonna go to Paul Duke. We have a teacher here at Paul Duke. Um, I don't think they're twins. They could be twins. They're at least sisters, maybe a year apart. Um, and Mr. Chase, give me a thumbs up. And so uh, one is at Paul Duke and one is at Norcross. And so we see that with families to where families do separate their siblings because their students are different and they need different things. The great news is, is that they can ride the bus together because they'll get on the same bus. They'll ride the, you know, the, the bus will come here to Paul Duke. The student that comes to Paul Duke gets off the bus and then the bus continues on to Norcross. So there's a lot of benefit to the model that we have in the community with Paul Duke and Norcross working together to steer, serve our students. So it's really up to you what, what your students think is best and what you think is best. Um, I have twins uh, myself and uh, we ended up separating them as we thought about college and beyond because they just needed different experiences. And I think anybody that's got more than one kid knows your kids are different. And if you're good at parenting one, the other one will let you know how bad you are parenting the other. And so it's, uh, that's just part of life. But our kids are different and that's what makes, it, that's what makes it, them special and unique and, and, and fun. And I'm going to say that because sometimes kids cannot be fun, but that's the right way to look at it. They're fun. These are good questions. Um, question about switching pathways. So students can switch pathways. The problem is if you switch pathways, you probably won't finish a pathway. So it's good to get a taste, take the intro course in a couple, and then pick a pathway and stick with it so you can get to those certification exams at the end. That's a really valuable experience. We want students to be able to do that. Other questions? This is probably a less academic question. However, my daughter is really pressing me to take the actual physical tour, but I've injured my foot recently. Is there a way if I showed up at the school with the injured foot and the little scooter that I have been relinquished to as a result of said injury, are there stairs that would impede my mobility in the school? <laughs> There's actually an elevator. So we do have, it's a multi-floor building. So you would take the elevator up and, and work around that way. So we would work with you on that. Um, I know that at some of our tours, um, our student tours, uh, we have a student, Maria, 
Um, she's actually in a wheelchair and she facilitates some part of the tour. So it's possible to get around the building um, and not be uh, on your fastest two feet, so to speak. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll definitely make that work if you end up coming out. Other questions? How many, how many students are uh, in a classroom? I know with Norcross, so I have a, a now graduate. He was part of the 2020, the COVID 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and so I remember his classrooms were very, very full. Mm -hmm. So I did wanna know approximately um, how many students are in each class? It varies. It varies. Now, so I would say in your average language arts class, Mr. Chase, you know, how many would you say? You can unmute and say you know better than anybody else. Uh, well, right the second with COVID, so with the PICS, uh, we do not have a single classroom with uh, more than 19 kids in it right now as far as face-to-face. -face. So we're really, really lucky in, in regards to that. Um, we definitely focus on smaller freshman class sizes. I can speak confidently and say a freshman uh, biology, um, algebra one, ninth grade language arts, stuff like that is going to be about 28, 29, 30 at the absolute most. Um, some of our higher level senior AP electives like AP psych would be a good example. Um, I, I will not let it go over 34. Um, I won't let it go over 34. But freshmen is we I mean they want we need more hands on with the freshmen so we definitely focus on 28 freshmen no more than 34 throughout the school. And we do we do put more seniors in a class older students they're they're a bit more um, able to self control self regulate and they're getting ready for college experiences that you know are going to be more independent so that's kind of how we structure the experience. And then some of our classes end up really small for, so, you know, if it's a unique program or something that we're launching, um, it starts really small and then, and then gets bigger. Yes, so classes begin at seven. We start early in the morning, we finish early, which is nice. It gives the students a, a nice big chunk of time in the afternoon. Um, and then of course, Flex Fridays run the same way, but students don't have to come to school, but you do have to do the work. That's the important part. You gotta do the work, you gotta do the learning. Other questions? I really appreciate all the questions. This has been a great time to, to talk and to share. And so thanks for all your questions. Trying to keep that up. Um, well, thank you. typing a response to, to an independent question. Any other questions? Thanks everybody for coming. And you know, it's gonna be recorded and posted to the website. So it'll be there if you need to refer back to it. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording now. Um, stop.